We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on the Miami Dolphins secondary, and this is where it was really ugly, just on the whole entire defense. I'll do the front seven later, but the whole team really just struggled versus this Bills offense. Gotta give credit to the Bills. They came out with a great game plan, and I think this was a mix of players and Fangio, like equal blame to everyone. Now, I'm definitely worried. There's definitely concern to be had, but I'm not ready to, like, you know, pull the plug. People are a little overreacting to it because it's still only four games into the season. I do expect the defense to improve. I think there's still talent there on the defensive side. Fangio has, you know, his record of being good. Now can these players execute? I've seen people dragging certain players on this team, like, you know, Chubb or Wilkins or Kohu. And, I mean, all of those players are not as bad as what people are saying. They can all be effective. They all have been effective at points this year. Everyone kind of disappeared. I think, you know, if there's any real struggle with this team right now, they missed some key players. Obviously, Ramsey Phillips not playing, but their off-ball linebackers is the main issue for what I'm seeing as a unit back there. And Fangio's specific play calling put his his players in very tough positions. You'll see throughout this video. Like right here, I think, you know, this first play that I'm going to show, Dolphins come out in cover three, and they just get put in a spot where they're just kind of out scheme this guy into the flat. So there's three receivers to this side. Kohu is just tight one-third matching digs right here. And then Bethel is supposed to match that number two if he goes seam or flat. And the number two, like, works a little too much over the middle. He could have passed this off, but he thinks, like, hey, he could be working off the seam. So I should match it. He's the flat defender also. So then they bring the, the receiver that was lined up in the backfield on this side of the formation, who is now the new number three, even though he's to the other side. And then they bring a corner blitz, which gets picked up easily. And then they're dropping Bradley Chubb into coverage as like the bonus hook. Like, so either Bethel could have been out in the flat, but he kind of was forced to match number two. They were clearly ready for these match type of coverages. And once he sees Bethel carry there, Chubb is the hook. He's not the flat defender, so he knows doesn't have to get as wide as, you know, a flat defender would. And it just puts, you know, these guys free down in the flat. They played way too soft. I don't know why Bradley Chubb is dropping into coverage on multiple plays. That's just bad use of your personnel. Josh Allen, got to give him credit. When Dolphins brought Blitz, he saw it. He was he knew when he was hot. They tried to bring, you know, the corner Blitz, bring the nickel, the dime, or a nickel in this case, but just right where he is, replace it. Throw it quick to, you know, their tight end, Dalton Kincaid. It's just free work. There's really nothing you can ask your players to do. They, they knew exactly where to go with the ball. They see it pre-snap. Maybe you could disguise it a little, a little bit better. But, like, the linebackers don't do that bad of a job, like, for what they're asked to do. He goes out, matches the number two, and for more Baker's line pre-snap, he's not going to be able to match the number three if he just sits right there. That's just getting out-schemed and picking up these free completions and letting the Bills offense get into a rhythm early on in this game. A lot to, like, missing Deshaun Elliott, I think, hurt a lot for this team as well. I think up front, there was, you know, a lot of people giving Andrew Van Ginkle credit. I'll get to that in the front seven video. He played well, but on his two sacks... The guys who are getting the most hate, Wilkins was kind of the player that got, like Van Ginkle got a cleanup sack for what Wilkins caused the pressure, and the second one, Bradley Chubb, caused the first pressure. So it's nice that Van Ginkle finished and cleaned those up, but the two players that have been seen the most highly criticized on defense for disappearing actually made the most impactful plays on those sacks. Then the Dolphins go man-to-man, -man, Kohu versus Diggs. I don't mind if the Dolphins go a little more match-man type one-on-one, -on -one, but he basically just gets man in this situation. But they just have so much time. There's so many situations where, like I know Kohu, getting a lot of hate. First of all, he's playing out of position. He's going in the toughest matchup in football, going against a top five receiver, just being man-to-man -man or zone match on him the whole day. And he has, you know, all the time in the world. One, two, three. Like, Allen had at least four seconds there for him to throw that football down the field. And Kohu does get routed up. He makes a dumb play at the end. I'll get, like, not going to excuse him. He made, played a bad game. There was a few plays where he got, you know, like he got beat here. He got holding, bad coverage. And then I don't like, you know, the push at the end. I mean, it's a very light push. It definitely is sold a little bit by Diggs, but you can't be having that. Got to finish these pressures. We just slip a little bit on the blitz, and it puts a DB in a very difficult spot when the QB is going to have that much time to throw, you know, a 17-yard comeback route. Another example, Dolphins getting put in tough position, getting out-schemed and outplayed on both situations. They do the flat swing out for Hardy. The Bills have been throwing this a lot this season, so this kind of gets him to bite down. They're in quarters. He's just going to match number one to the outside. Number one pushes up vertically enough here and breaks the inside. You take that. He's going to match it. He could pass it off to number two, but that's just not how Fangio's system works. They match a lot of these things. If he's going to work down, so then they can both kind of 
bracket it, but that means Bethel has to carry this wheel, but they're slow playing it. They're baiting like it's going to be the throw into the flat. I mean, either way, it puts everyone, like, he has, the linebacker then has to relate to number three. Bethel just gets caught with his eyes in the backfield, makes a poor play, and they pretty much schemed up exactly how to beat this Dolphins defense because they made this exact same mistake last week versus the Broncos. The Broncos just were not able to capitalize on it. Like, this, these are things that you got to get cleaned up in the secondary and getting Ko in the slot. I want to see Ko in the slot, and I want to see... Um, Cam Smith playing on the outside, to be honest. It's just too easy on third and two for them to throw this down in the flat to the number three. They clearly understood exactly what the Dolphins were playing. They're just making this an easy pitch and catch. Josh Allen's making the good read. They're in cover three. Kohu's a tight third. But what you also have to understand, this guy works out number two. So Bethel is, you know, technically the seam flat defender. Number two works to the outside. He has to match this. Co does they distribute this route correctly he takes number one he takes over the top of number two they're playing what they're supposed to they also drop bradley chubb into coverage again i don't know how he's supposed to get pressure if he's dropping into coverage but he's a hook defender he's supposed to relate to number three but if he's a hook defender to the inside and he's also not a guy who should be dropping to coverage he's not going to get out to the running back in time and they just pick up an easy third down like there's nothing that those players could really have done in that situation to stop that from happening just based on what the defensive call was. Just another great hot recognition by Allen. They try to break Kohu on the blitz. He sees it right away. Throw this out to Knox and he kind of just bullies Javon Holland after the play. Holland put in a tough spot as well because he's technically the deep third to this side of the field because he has to replace Kohu because they're playing cover three with like this fire zone action. So he has to get over the top and get there. There's no, like, he actually makes a good play initially here from where he's aligned pre-snap to get down. If he limited this to, you know, like a five-yard catch from where he first hit him, this would have been actually a really high-level play by, Co or by Holland. But uh, I think he tried to go for a little bit of a strip, and then he ended up just getting absolutely bullied on that one. Dolphins actually do a pretty good job in the secondary on this one, distributing to this side. They're stacked up, and they end up playing, you know, match to each position here. Jones helping to the dig side. Dig sits which is good, you know, going man-to-man, -man, he just has like a sit route like that, just a little hitch, nothing too crazy, he's not trying to juke anyone out, they take that away, everyone is in a position, and it forces Josh Allen to scramble, and actually a good open field tackle by Brandon Jones, he struggled, but it is, you know, a little too early, I've seen some people hating on Brandon Jones, and I mean, it's definitely fair to criticize, like, some people are like, you know, get him off the team, but like, that's a little too far, give him a chance, he's still coming back from his injury, but I'm still, you know, it's definitely... Uh, thing you need to be cautious with but they definitely need Deshaun Elliott back Dolphins in cover three again this looks like a very a play the Dolphins were on play action hit that back foot throw the you know the sl the slant or like a drift post over the middle whatever you want to call it and Kohu gets beat here again and I feel like you know when you watch these things on broadcast it just looks like Kohu's gonna be all over and over again but we when you see the Dolphins beat this type of coverage we're usually looking at you know either the nickel or the linebacker who's really getting beat the nickel gets the flat, so he's it makes sense that he's going out here to match this. Look at Duke Riley. Duke Riley is a one of the main issues on this play as well. Coe's natural lev leverage is to the outside based on his alignment. It makes sense to where he is. If it's a quick, you know, post like that, that should be completed most of the time if the linebackers don't take it away. He gets drawn down, and it leaves this big open room. So while, you know, Coe gets blame here, I think that's honestly a more of a play on Duke Riley getting sucked down by the run action more than anything there. Kohu played a very bad game, and I'm, you know, willing to admit that I'm a big Kohu fan, but it, it's not as bad as some make, make it out to seem. Like, the pass interference I'm going to show is not his fault. The tackling on that Diggs touchdown was bad. That was a really bad one. That was definitely his worst play, which I will also show. But there were some situations he was just put in very tough, which I just fairly don't think you should be asking him to do when he's playing out of position as well. Here's the f pass interference. Dolphins go into their, you know, tricks cover eight look they're playing cover two to the passing strength um, i'll try to explain this back show it a little more slowly to the strength this is cover eight so that means they're playing cover two to the bottom here and they're playing cover four to the backside. and it just basically means he's one-on-one -on -one with Diggs. no help the safety is playing quarters the tricks call means he's looking back you know almost like robbing a three by one situation over the middle they end up you know distributing the routes decently fine to this side but he's just gonna throw it to Kohu against Kohu the whole time this is actually pretty good coverage. I don't understand how it's pass interference. I know people are saying, hey, turn and look for the ball. That's not a penalty if you don't, if your face, face guarding is not a penalty if you don't look for the ball anymore. If you run through them and you're not looking, that's where you do get the penalties. I would like to see him turn and find it, but he's not running through him here at all. He actually doesn't even touch him at all. Like they have a little bit of hand fight, as you can see right here. 
at this point you can see a little bit of hand fight but this is like maybe one of the worst pass interference calls i've seen in a while like he makes a play hits the ball doesn't touch him at all after that little hand fight down the field but that's not what he was throwing the flag on so i don't i really don't understand that one at all here we get one-on-one kohu versus Diggs. at least got to show one of his wins you know uh on the fade good coverage down the red zone like i know people probably don't want to see him on the outside i think he can still play outside corner and like you know do be a solid okay decent number two on the outside like i know people probably won't think of that anymore he's still much much better in the nickel but he was definitely yeah exposed in this game but put in a very very difficult spot then the bills design this up you know walk the motion into digs allen just does some great work here and they find digs in the end zone this is just cover three but holland is cheating to this side of the field to the field side here and it ends up just being the linebackers like he's deep one third he ends up matching this um digs is coming underneath underneath on the drag i think that's long who sees it comes down sees him escaping the pocket and he's just able to work behind it that's just a super high level play by josh allen sometimes there's just nothing you can do he's kind of just going with the flow of the play and just gets caught out of space and he throws with anticipation behind him and that's just very good offense and tough to spot stop and um like they got pressure on him pretty quickly here van ginkle you know forcing him to the outside sealer uh gets the you know the seal here make him turn back to the inside and then chubb's able to get a hit on him and they just find this connection in the end zone and here's the really bad play all around cover one bills get a great pocket no pressure on him kohu gets beat and then just terrible tackling dix gets this long touchdown we'll go back and watch this again these things are going to happen you know like second and six situation I don't mind them going in this sort of aggressive style defense playing cover one on the outside here man to man man to man but now they have pretty much no help if they're going deep vertically and then they do play action get max protect they try to bring five they get no pressure Allen has like at least four seconds to throw this and Diggs is out there we'll watch him you know setting this up break this the outside back up basically working a triple move on Kohu I don't mind Kohu. If if Kohu only got beat here for this catch, I would say, yeah, that's a tough position to be in, covering their number one with no help over the top for that long. Yeah, I understand why he got open right here, but you got to finish this. You really do. Like, he gets out of spot, and then Brandon Jones, like, they just end up, like, running into each other almost. Like, Kohu's at least fighting, and then Jones kind of hits him off of it, and they kind of bump into each other, and I feel like they would have finished the tackle, but they bump into each other, and it gets Diggs to come free. Kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, just not great terrible <laughs> pretty much all around from everything you can think of looks like the dolphins end up getting like in a three match situation where they get matched up across the board basically just man to man they carry this underneath and they're trying to like set this up off the play action get things going out into the flat and then they actually get some good pressure force allen to escape the pocket very interesting situation they actually cover this up really well to this side like everything was covered when allen hit the back of his you know break there and then he's forced to escape the pocket off the pressure and it puts long in a tough situation because they only have him to this side he sees allen breaking down he wants to break on allen there's also a tight end there's also a running back i don't really blame him for this and then holland left out in space goes for the uh tries to you know get the um punch there for the ball and then David Long at least shows some good effort to get down there. And he tries to strip it, making some plays. I mean, at this point, the game's not looking very good. This is just very good offense. And sometimes you just can't stop that stuff. Dolphins go quads down in the red zone. Actually, a pretty good job here on third and 13. They distribute things up nicely to the inside. Everything's dead. You can see how they play this. To the backside, they're basically just matching up. Howard on the outside versus number one. Baker doesn't get out leveraged to the flat. Is in a good spot. Third and 13. They get some pressure, at least some decent pressure there. This is taken away by Long underneath. He's willing to, he's just staying top down, which is nice to see. Let him throw it. They get the double up top, and it forces Allen to escape. And also, a really good hustle here by Sealer and Wilkins out to the edge. Love to see that at least playing with high energy. I feel like even though like I don't think it was a poor effort. I feel like the you know even though they missed some tackles and made some bad plays, they were still f flying around and trying to at least be involved. Most of the guys, at least. Dolphins go quads again. Quarters down in the red zone. I don't know what Justin Bethel is doing here. Like, what is this? He gets hands on, tries to reroute, and then goes towards the middle of the field. Like, I don't know what he's reading. He is the flat defender. He should not let anyone get out to the flat of him. He is the flat. 
here's the middle hook, here's the other flat, and then here's the four guys playing their quarters on the back end. He's getting hands-on. There's nothing else taking his eyes this way. I don't know what. He sees but or Allen sort of moving he moves. I don't understand. There's no one even here to, like, take away. And then this guy should never catch the ball a yard short of this, get back up, juke backwards, and then still get the first down. Like, I, I don't even know what Justin Bethel was doing on that play. Here's the other Kohu touchdown that he gave up. This one is not as bad as the other one. This one's just like... What are you supposed to do with all that room? Look at this space that he has to cover. Bills come in with 6-0 line. They bring in 6-0 line, so Dolphins go big. Look at all this. They're expecting a run. Everyone else, they're basically playing cover zero. There's no safety. Everyone's in man-to-man. -man. These guys are all sitting in the middle of the field. No one getting leveraged out into the flat. Like, I don't know what Kohu's supposed to do here. Like, he does, you know, get caught with the eye candy breaking the inside. I don't really blame him for this one too much. Like, yeah, would like to see him cover it better. But that's just poor scheme, putting your players in a tough position. And then I don't even know what this whole thing was. Down in the middle, they were just scared of the run because they brought in the six offensive linemen and they got outplayed. Then they kind of switched things up late in the game. Kelvin Joseph playing on the outside, Kohu back in the slot. It seems to me like they motioned this over and they're playing cover three. They rotate down to cover three and there's just a miscommunication. Like Co uh, Jones goes down to the flat, he becomes the flat defender. He's the hook. So he kind of sits in his hook area right here. Kind of gets a reroute and then thinks he might have to get out to the flat. But they're just like both kind of covering the flat here. And then Kelvin, who should be the deep third defender, just I don't even know what he's reading. He just gets caught sitting down and then they have two guys working in behind him, um, which they get Gabe D Davis just working free down the field. So just miscommunication there by the secondary. Last play that we're going to break down, cover six. At least got to give some credit here to Howard making a play. Xavier Howard played a pretty good game. Wasn't really asked to do too much. They actually distribute things pretty nicely here. You can see to the top, Dolphins playing cover two up here. Kelvin get the reroute, even though he gets the outside release. At least he gets the reroute to get to that. Duke Riley isn't just covering space. He doesn't want, he wants to relate to the, you know, number two. Get down, at least take away the check down option. Um, good job here at the bottom. Co gaining some depth, leveraging this route. They leverage this route here too. With Holland ready to break on it. Long's able to match it. Jones is staying over the top of the dig. Everything is, uh, you know, covered pretty well. And then Xavier Hard makes a nice play at the catch point to finish. So, I mean, I guess we're ending with a positive play because this was really the last time they actually passed it. I was just going in order. But for the most part, it was negative. Not good. Secondary didn't look great overall. I don't expect it to look like this all season. But when they play some elite offenses, they got to step up. There's got to be a better game plan. Got to be better execution. And those things should happen with more experience within the system and with, you know, healthier players back there they were missing some guys Elliot Ramsey Phillips being the biggest ones Ramsey's not gonna play for a while but Elliot and Phillips will definitely help out this squad so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys later peace